Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Jacob Larson, and this is Read, Write, and Cite, the show where I teach you how to read, write, and cite for your college classes. This is the second video in a series on how to write an essay. In the first video, we talked about what an essay is and kind of clarified some things there. In this video, we're going to talk specifically on how to recognize the argument that an author is making. So let's get into it. First of all, we probably need to define a couple of words to make sure we're all on the same page, that you understand where I'm getting at. So here's some words we need to understand. An essay, it's, it's typically a written uh, argument that's going to weigh different sides of an issue and present a debatable point. So let's define a couple words to help us with that so that we can break it down in things that we've observed. Okay, so an argument. Argument is, is kind of the, the structure within an essay, right? Um, it's an organized presentation of claims and evidence to support the author's viewpoint on a topic. Okay, so it's the presentation of the case. And that can be done in a lot of different ways, very closely tied to what we think of an essay, but that's an argument, right? Evidence, you know, it's, the, it's the information, the examples, the references, the whatever, the content that's being used to support the claim that the author is making in the argument. The claim is the debatable point that the author is trying to make. That is often uh, the structure, the purpose of the argument. And then uh, a couple other things we also need to understand. We need to know what a source is, right? As part of evidence, a source, we have different kinds of sources, but sources where the information is coming from. If, uh, if I read a news article, that's a source. If I talk to the author who wrote it, that's a source, right? Okay. Within sources, we also have secondary and primary sources, and this is something that, that comes up in school often. A primary source is... Um, Someone who's very close to the information, someone who was there, who experienced it firsthand, someone who has firsthand information, that is a primary source. So if we're, we're doing research on Shakespeare, this is uh, someone who knew him, someone who worked with him, it could be Shakespeare himself, primary source. A document from that time period, uh, you know, closely related to the, the scene. A secondary source is uh, it's a layer removed from the information. A secondary source could be an expert on Shakespeare, but maybe that expert was here now, and works at Harvard, and has spent her or his entire life studying Shakespeare. They're going to know a lot, but they weren't there. And so what they present, their, their information, it's secondary to the primary source, probably uses secondary and primary sources to generate what they know. But we need to understand the difference because they are different. Now, an author who is writing an essay, who's making an argument, who's trying to present uh, information, they're probably going to use a combination of different kinds of sources to support their claim. They may be using primary sources, secondary sources, whatever they have access to, and that's relevant. These are all terms we need to understand as we start to understand how they make their argument and so that we can recognize it, right? So here's what I would suggest you do. Go ahead and pause this video for a bit. Don't, don't close it out, but pause it. And I want you to go to a new site. Go somewhere like cnn.com. Up at the top of the page, they're going to have opinion as a link. I say opinion because these are going to be the easiest to pick apart and to understand for, for our purposes. Go to the top of the page, click on Opinion, and uh, find some opinion piece. This is going to be an argument that someone who works for or has uh, freelanced for CNN has published. And they're going to be arguing an opinion on an issue that they feel is important, right? What I want you to do is look at this and see if you can figure out what their argument is. What are they trying to say? What's their point? Once you've identified that, look at the evidence that they're using to make that point. Are they using evidence? Are they using research? Do they have statistics to back it up? Sources? 
This is how an author makes her or his case. These are the kinds of things you need to do when you make your own arguments. You structure it. You have a clear point, a claim to make that your argument supports and justifies through a series of different points that you make and evidence to support those points. That's the, the general structure of an argument, a general structure of an essay. And we can see it in real-world examples like an opinion piece on CNN.com. Now you can pick other websites. You can go to Fox News, MSNBC, New York Times. You can find them all sorts of places. Maybe your local newspaper is going to have them. But this is kind of the modern version of the essay. Now, if we go back in history, we're going to see all sorts of essays throughout history. You see Thomas Paine's Common Sense. That was a, they called it a pamphlet at the time, but that's basically just a long essay. You have the Federalist Papers that uh, Alexander Hamilton and, and those who are working with him, that they wrote to defend the new Constitution. Those are essays. When you have the Supreme Court and they, they make a decision, they, they present... Um, their, their statement, their ruling, and then there's the, the counter-ruling. Those are, those are essays. When uh, a lawyer is, is presenting an appeal, that's, that's essentially an essay. It's a written uh, text that is evaluating ideas and presenting a debatable point. That's an essay. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're trying to figure out how to recognize when you learn how to recognize that, you can start to see it a lot of other places. See, the skill here is not just to learn how to write an essay. The skill is to recognize when someone is trying to persuade you and how they're trying to persuade you. So that's what we're trying to learn here. So if you haven't already, stop, check that out, and start to figure out, okay, this is what so-and-so is doing, this is what they're saying. Then, once you've recognized the argument, you can start to become an informed reader, a student of what's happening. And you could say, do I agree with this? Or do I not agree with this? Is this right? Are there flaws? What can I learn from this? And that's what I want you to do. Um, take the time. Check out what other people are doing. Opinion pieces on a new site is going to be the easiest thing. To, uh, to be able to check this out. But what you're looking for is what, the, what are they trying to say and what examples are they bringing up. And depending on where you're looking, you know, a professional site, yeah, you can expect that they're, they're going to do a good job of at least justifying their point whether you agree with it or not. If you take someone's blog, for example, maybe they do it as well or, or maybe they don't. Maybe they don't justify it very well. But start looking for examples so that you can learn from it, okay? Uh, again, I'm Dr. Jacob Larson. Thank you for watching. This is the second video in a series. Um, if you want to check out the first video where I, I talk about what an essay is, you can see that in the findings or um, probably link it right here. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.